So if you didn't already see last week, Jordy helped me walk through the whole process of setup and installation for a new fork and a new shock. And we're hoping to do more videos related to the tuning of that setup now. So to start, I wanted to ask, what is the purpose of a volume spacer? Volume spacers are they're so basic. For ease of use, we're gonna use a fork just because it's it's far easier to get volume spacers in and out and kind of describe things, but they do the exact same thing in a fork and a shock. However they look, whether it's bands or clips or like a solid one that fits into the shock, they all take up room, which makes the air chamber smaller. If you had a, a small ball filled with 100 PSI and you tried to compress the thing, it, it ramps up so quickly that it's really hard to compress. Whereas if you took a big ball and you put pressure in it, you'd get a bunch more room before it actually built up pressure. It's kind of why like road tires, you have to run so much pressure because the volume. And then you have these giant balloon tires that you run almost no pressure in that move a whole lot. And it's, it's a similar feeling when you're riding on a bike. These volume spacers would just sit on the air side they're underneath this cap and we'll show that later. And all they're doing is changing the spring curve. So you can go from something that's very linear and kind of even the whole way through to something that has a sharp ramp at the end to prevent bottom out. And I thought we could do like a little demonstration. Right now I have, this is a new 36 at 140. I think I have three volume spacers and a hundred PSI and uh, it might be hard in slippers, but <laughs> if you can balance or the best thing to do is like, just go do like a little two foot curb drop or something. And this is great for setup too. It kind of shows you like an approximate volume, but you can just trying to give it a smash and you see it move the o-ring up ah we have probably a centimeter to go before bottom out yeah and then the most important thing when doing volume spacers is letting the air out of the fork before you unscrew the cap mm. <laughs> you can get some pretty good explosions <laughs> So air out for hours, all of the air sides on 36, 38, and 40 are a 32 millimeter socket. So there you can see the air cap, the three volume spacers clipped in, and we'll pull those off. Good idea to keep that clean. Make sure you wipe it all off before you do any of this. You don't want any dirt falling in there. You don't want anything that can damage the little O-ring that seals. So anytime you're doing volume spacers on anything, pump some air in, give the fork a little cycle. You just want to hit that transfer port to transfer air from positive spring to negative spring. You don't want to like bounce it or do anything weird. You won't hit it. It's, it's like five to 10 mil push and you can hear it and feel it. All right, so there's same pressure with zero volume spacers instead of three. Let's see, oh, move that O-ring down. And you see now, like it's basically bottomed. So that's what volume spacers do. Hmm. And I'm glad you explained it because it, it is, it feels more intuitive if you're bottoming out to just say, well, I need more pressure. So I'm just going to pump up the pressure. Absolutely. And that's, so that's why you constantly keep going in these circles of pressure, volume, sag, or sag, or pressure, sag, volume, whatever it is. But like, you have to keep revisiting it. 
you can't just set pressure, you bottom out and you go, oh, I'm adding volume spacers. Well then what's your sag now? Cause that changes everything. So just remember to keep doing these circles. And I know it takes some time, but you do it a few times and it turns into second nature. You just know, I set my sag, I'm still bottoming out, I'm gonna change volume. Check my sag again, make sure it's the same pressure or what pressure I need. Still bottoming out, add another one. And shocks, shocks are exactly the same as forks. So again, um, gently, gently let the air out. I usually do this on the bike because sometimes you'll let the air out and the shock will stick down because it hasn't let the air out evenly from positive and negative. And if it's on the bike, you can kind of give it a yank or push it down or whatever to get the air to transfer and then let all the air out. It's not the end of the world. And on all the X2s, you just want to push the air can down to make sure it gives you a little bit of clearance to get this little snap ring out. You line that up with a mark Usually you can use a fingernail and just kind of pop it out of its seat. And then you just kind of walk it out. <laughs> and these things are just held on now with uh, O-rings, but there's a fair amount of friction. So you really got to give it a pull. So there's your volume spacers right there. And it just clips in. The nice thing about these is on certain bikes, since they're two pieces, you can put them in without having to take the shock out of the bike. You know, you just let the air out, slide the can down a little bit and pop in a band. And then these are your ceiling O-rings. This is outer sleeve with the air valve. You just line those little dots back up and slide it on. That's it. I'll put the snap ring back on, but I'd have to go find it. <laughs> yeah. That's super helpful stuff. You do it a few times and it turns into second nature, but it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of time, like most good things and learning. Mm -hmm.